So, welcome to the new, larger MOSFET testbed. I've uh, put three sections in, in this testbed because now I want to move on to microcontroller interfacing. So we may well have the microcontroller here on the left hand side. Uh, interface circuitry between the microcontroller and the MOSFET in the middle here and then the MOSFET on the right hand side as before. And I've now fixed the uh, car cigarette lighter socket. It's got a fuse here, so it's capable of handling lots of amps, so we can run both the 21 watt lamp and also the 55 watt lamp. Now I should say that uh, I was going to look at input capacitance in this section, but um, the demonstration I'd set up wasn't very impressive. The input capacitance wasn't as significant as I had in my mind that it might be. So we'll come back to that when we start looking at uh, higher frequency switching of MOSFETs. So here's a microcontroller. This is an Arduino compatible uh, Pro Mini and uh, I've attached red and black wires onto it and connected it directly across the 12 volt supply. Now of course the microcontroller itself doesn't run on 12 volts, it runs on 5 and uh, on the board is a tiny little uh, three terminal voltage regulator, standard analog regulator, which drops the supply voltage down to 5 volts. But significantly here, it's uh, got a common ground. And that means that this microcontroller will always be referenced to 0 volts, which is the black wire. Now the microcontroller's got a program programmed into it, and it's running. And all it does is turns that little green LED on and off, uh, on for one second, off for one second, and uh, what we'll do is interface that to the MOSFET so that the 20 watt bulb turns on for one second and off for one second. So I've gone right back to basics here. I've got the N channel MOSFET in the low side of the circuit. And the interfacing uh, of this one is incredibly simple. You just connect the gate directly to one of the output pins on the microcontroller, specifically the one that is actually flashing on and off, of course. And uh, if I apply 12 volts, this is what happens. The bulb simply comes on when the green LED comes on, and it goes off when the green LED goes off. So, what's going on here? Well, we've connected the gate of the MOSFET to the output of the microcontroller. Now that microcontroller only switches between zero volts and 5 volts. So the gate of the MOSFET isn't getting the full 10 volts that the datasheet recommends to get the ultra low on resistance. But it doesn't seem to matter. And if I just check the temperature of that MOSFET, it's completely cold. So let's see if there's a problem um, ramping up the current by putting a bigger bulb on here. So here's the 55 watt car headlamp bulb. Now at 12 volts, 55 watts is going to be just under 5 amps. So let's plug in and see what happens. And there doesn't appear to be a problem there. That's working fine. I'll just leave it running for a little bit to see whether the MOSFET gets hot. Remember, the on resistance isn't going to be the 17.5 milliohms that the datasheet uh, offers with a gate source voltage of 10 volts because we don't have 10 volts, we only have 5 volts. But if I put my finger on there, that's not even getting warm. Let's take this a bit further. So you can see here that I've paralleled up two of these 55 watt uh, car headlight bulbs. Let's put the bar on. Okay, well, it seems to be uh, happy enough driving two of them. And uh, let's see how warm this thing's getting. Well, it's not warm at the moment. There is a little bit of warmth there, and I can tell you that from uh, testing this, it does warm up, but it's quite impressive. Even with just 5 volts on the gate of this MOSFET, it uh, it only gets warm. It doesn't really get hot, certainly not uh, hot enough that I would be concerned that it would was going to damage itself, and that's without a heat sink. So we're letting the uh, temperature build up inside this thing, and we're not drawing any of that heat out. So in the simplest case, microcontroller and MOSFET interfacing is as simple as just connecting one directly to the other. Um, so let's see what happens if we now switch to the P-channel MOSFET so that we don't have to break up our ground line. 
So here's the P-channel MOSFET back in the circuit. And uh, with the P-channel, of course, we're in the high side of the circuit here. I've just put a, a ground line in the low side. And I've connected the gate directly to the output of the microcontroller, exactly the same as we had with the N-channel MOSFET. And let's put on the power. OK, so the bulb has come on, but the bulb is staying on. And you can see that the green light on the microcontroller is still flashing on and off, but we're not actually switching. The MOSFET's switched on, but we can't get it to turn off. So what's happening here? Well, when the microcontroller output is low, the gate of the MOSFET is down here at zero volts. And that gives us 12 volts gate to source, because source is the red wire, which is at 12 volts. Um, it's, it's actually minus 12 volts gate to source. And minus 12 volts turns this thing on good and proper. Now, when the microcontroller raises its output to 5 volts, we're still minus 7 volts gate to source. And that's still enough to keep the MOSFET turned on. So, in fact, the MOSFET's going from very on to quite on. It's just on all the time. So the bulb isn't switching. So this uh, simple configuration of connecting the gate directly to the microcontroller output doesn't work. And we're going to have to come up with some sort of interface circuitry. So I've lashed up this interface circuit actually using the N-channel MOSFET as an interfacing device between the microcontroller and the P-channel MOSFET. And if you look here, I've got a 10K resistor. So when this MOSFET, the N-channel MOSFET is switched off, the gate of the P-channel MOSFET is pulled up to 12 volts, and that turns it off because gate and source are at the same potential. When the microcontroller output turns on, when the green light comes on, this MOSFET is turned on because its gate is raised to plus 5 volts with respect to source. And so the drain pulls down to source. So it pulls this point here down to 0 volts, and that uh, creates minus 12 volts gate to source um, for the P-channel MOSFET, and that turns on. Now, using an N-channel MOSFET as an interface to a P-channel MOSFET is not a brilliantly clever idea. It does work. But let's make up a little tiny uh, interface circuit using an NPN bipolar transistor. So here's the interface circuit uh, implemented with a NPN transistor. And I've drawn a circuit diagram here so you can see uh, what's been done. Let's just get that in shot. So once again, you can see that the uh, LED on the microcontroller is turning on and off. That raises the base of the NPN transistor here. I've used a 2N3904, uh, a 10K resistor in the base, because of course, unlike a MOSFET, um, an NPN or a bipolar transistor has a continuous current flow from base to emitter. So we need to limit that current with a resistor. Once again, I've got the 10K pull up, which is up there, pulls up to 12 volts. And then the output here uh, goes to the gate of the P-channel MOSFET. So there's an interface uh, circuit much smaller than using a N-channel MOSFET. N-channel MOSFET doesn't really uh, make a, a sensible interface circuit uh, to make the P-channel MOSFET work. Now, what happens if we go back to the circuit, which has the N-channel MOSFET in the high side of the circuit with the bootstrap capacitor. How do we build an interface circuit for that? So here's the N-channel MOSFET, once again in the high side of the circuit. And uh, I put the bootstrap capacitor on with the diode to charge it up. And just to recap, um, to turn on the MOSFET, we put it onto the positive side of the capacitor and to turn it off on the negative side of the capacitor. So how are we going to interface these voltages up here down to the microcontroller, which is swinging between 0 and 5 volts? It seems like an almost impossible task, but there is a way. And this is it. It uses opto-isolators. They can isolate the voltages down at this end of the circuit from the higher voltages up at this end of the circuit. So we finally have the N-channel MOSFET in the high side of the circuit interfaced to the microcontroller, which is swinging between 0 volts and 5 volts. And I'll go into full details of how the opto-isolator circuitry works in the next part of the tutorial.